Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library where today we'll be talking about all of the books that I read in February. I guess when I say all of the books I read in February, I don't actually mean all of the books I read in February. I mean half of the books that I read in February because I read a lot this month and I actually ended up doing a mid-month wrap-up where I read 12 books in 14 days. So when we go through the books that I read, I will send you to the other video for like full context on those. In the month of February, I read 21 books with a total of 6,181 pages, which is to say a lot. <laughs> When we go through my wrap up, I typically start at the lowest rated and work my way up to the highest rated, but we're gonna do something a little different this month because we're gonna start with a book that I didn't rate at all. I did a beta read for my friend Laura, uh, Laura Nettles, who I'll link down below. She is a fellow author tuber. And I did a beta read for her for one of her spooky mid grades. I counted that towards my total for the month because I did read it all in the month of February. And I feel like I should reward myself by counting it. Um, however, it's a beta read, so I didn't rate it. That would be weird. I also had a DNF in February and that was Hex. Um, I don't remember who that's by. I didn't write it down and I currently don't have any internet so I cannot look it up. Um, but I DNF Hex and I will link my review for that down below along with everything else. My reviews on Goodreads will be linked down below. The lowest rated book of the month was When I Sing Mountains Dance by Irene Sola and I gave that a 2.75 out of 5 stars. I talked about that in my mid-month wrap-up so you can get more information on that there but essentially it was part of my local bookstores book club um, that were reading translated works and it was very weird. Then with three stars I had Ashes to Ashes by Siobhan Vivian and Jenny Han. Again this was in the mid-month wrap-up. Also with three stars and also in the mid-month wrap-up was The Hope of Atlantis by Brandon Sanderson. At a 3.25 out of 5 stars and in the mid-month wrap-up was Sweet Little Lies by Kaz Freer which is the first book in this series that the series is named after the main character. Kinsella. Cat Kinsella Mysteries. I think. And finally we have a book that we're actually going to talk about and that is Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. This is the fifth book in the Truly Devious series and I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. This was my lowest rated of all of the books in this series. Everything else in the series has gotten 5 stars from me and this was not it. For some reason the mystery in this seemed very easy to solve. Like it just wasn't I mean it wasn't that hard to figure out what was going on or why um, with like the past element and it just honestly wasn't even that interesting because it was so easy to solve in your brain. Um, I don't feel like even really was there a lot of evidence. That's the problem is there wasn't evidence for like why things happened. It was all just like based off of Stevie's guessing which I mean kind of is how things happened in the other books as well but there was usually like some kind of evidence or some kind of knowledge that she gained from like talking to people or doing investigations and really there just wasn't any of that in here. It was just these people died, this is how they died and I know who did it because of this one thing that happened and it was just kind of really dumb and I didn't like it. Also all of the characters were caricatures of themselves. It was kind of like it was written as fan fiction and someone decided to change all of the characters personalities um, and I did not like that. I almost DNF'd this twice off of decisions that Stevie made that are not decisions that I think Stevie would ever have made. They really pissed me off and I almost stopped reading it twice because of that. Um, I did still end up giving it a 3.25 because I still love this series and I guess it was probably more of a nostalgia rating than anything else. Um, I do plan to pick up the next book in the series. I hated the way this ended because it doesn't even like end on a cliffhanger. It just ends like mid-sentence um, at like the dumbest thing ever and also pissed me off. So yay. We then have 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I picked this up because Julie and Amber are both friends of friends. How about fans of Katherine Ryan Howard? I don't know, they might be your friend. What do I know? Uh, but they're both fans of Katherine Ryan Howard. However, they have both since told me that this is their least favorite of her books, or they told me that before I bought it. I don't remember, but basically it was book of the month and I had plenty of credits. So I was like, I'll check it out. This book follows two characters who meet 
um, a little bit before the panini happened in the world. And this does involve the panini. So if you're like not cool with the giant pepperoni, then probably not the book for you. However, I knew I was okay with reading this. So it starts off with this couple who start dating a little bit before the panini. When it happens, they decide that they're going to move in together so that they can spend time with each other, which is the thing that happened with a lot of people. And I don't know why, because that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, <laughs> I don't trust anybody that much. And this is why. Um, it, the back literally says, no one even knew they were together. Now one of them is dead. And that is essentially the premise of this book. It starts out with um, one of them being dead. We don't know which one until as the story progresses and later on we figure out which one. Um, it's a dual timeline, multi-perspective. So we're getting the current timeline from the investigator who's investigating the murder and then the past um, from the female of the couple. And then there's another point of view added in later on that really changes things because from the beginning you're just kind of like this is just it's okay but it's not great. When that third perspective is added in it changes everything. And then there are plot twists. Some of it I could have guessed and some of it was like, okay, that's interesting. But there's a plot twist that happened that was part of a plot, like it was a plot twist on top of a plot twist. And I gasped. I was shooketh and I was not well, basically. So was it the best mystery thriller I've ever read? No. Was it fantastically twisty? Yes. Will I read more from Katherine Ian Howard? Also yes. So if you think you can handle the panini part of it, then I do recommend it. It was a good book as far as like learning everybody's secrets, what everybody was hiding, you know, why um, was the couple really together? Why were they both there? Like it was, it was a time basically. Um, I had a, and it was a good time. So and we then have the second book in a series that I read this month. And that is that time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf by Kimberly Fleming. I talked about this in the mid month wrap up. So if you want to know more about it, you can go check it out there. Also in the mid month wrap up holes by Lewis Sacker. Every time I talk about this book, I say, Kate and I will be discussing this as part of authortube chat book club, which has gotten pushed back, I think three weeks at this point because life has been happening. And so right now, as of currently, this book chat should be going live later this evening. If things go as they're supposed to, um, it should be the first Tuesday of March. We normally do the third Tuesday of the month and we have failed miserably this month. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot going on. And so we just, it keeps getting pushed back. It's fine. We're all going to be fine. Um, I still need to watch the movie and currently don't have internet. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, talked about this in the mid month wrap up. You can check out more information about it there, but I did end up giving it a 3.5 out of five stars. That's a lie. 3.75 out of five. Next, we get to our four stars, the first of which was Mitosis by Brandon Sanderson. I talked about that in the mid-month wrap-up, but it is a like novella part short story of the Reckoners series by Brandon Sanderson, which I've been continuing to read in March. And then let's talk about this chunky baby. I talked about the first two books of this trilogy, Arrows of the Queen and Arrows Flight in the mid-month wrap-up, but I did not yet talk about Arrows Fall. These are by Mercedes Lackey. I gave the first and third books four stars and the second book 3.75. I had to check my notes because I wasn't sure. This trilogy as a whole is very much character driven. There is plot but it's not like the super thick plot but this world is so fantastic. Uh, Mercedes Lackey has this series. This is I think it's the Heralds of Valdemar series. It originally started with this series that came out in 1987, which is the year I was born, but this was the original trilogy. And at this point, I think there's like 26 books in this world, um, some major trilogies and then like short stories and like spinoffs and prequels and all kinds of things. I do plan to read more of these as the year goes on uh, because I had a fantastic time reading these. I really like Mercedes writing. 
I do like the way that the series ended. Um, it ended in a very cute way that made me cry. There was, a, there's a lot of like political intrigue, a lot of like fantasy elements, a lot of travel, um, war. Um, there is in the last book some sexual assault and violence towards women, but it is, it's not really described on page. It's just kind of like said that it happens. So it's not very descriptive because these are YA. Not that YA can't be descriptive, but you know what I mean. It was YA in 87. However, speaking of it being YA in 87, the main character, one of her best friends, is a lesbian. And there's actually talk of a throuple at one point. So like progressive for its time, not necessarily progressive for 2023, but progressive for its time. I mean, we're talking 36 years ago. You didn't see many a lesbian as a main character in a book. So anyway, I loved this trilogy. It was fantastic. I also have a deep love for Mercedes Lackey's um, Hunter trilogy, which is set in a completely different world um, and written in the early 2000s, but I love it. So um, Mercedes Lackey is like up there with some of my favorite authors at this point. So we then have our friend Daisy Darker, which also was a four out of five stars. Uh, this is by Alice Feeney. I read one of Alice Feeney's books previously and did not like it at all, but Julie said that this one was really good. If I had not known that this was, and then, then there were none retelling, I probably would have enjoyed this more. Uh, but because if you know the plot of And Then There Were None, you kind of can guess like what's going to happen. However, there is a plot twist at the end of this book that blew my fucking mind that I was not expecting in any way, shape or form and really was just like, uh, I'm sorry, what? 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 So essentially this book follows our main character. Her name is Daisy Darker. I just want to look up what her character's name was like. It's not the fucking title of the book. Okay, uh, this book follows our main character Daisy Darker who has a family that consists of herself, obviously, her Nana, her parents, her two sisters, and a niece. It is her Nana's 80th birthday weekend and the family is getting together at Nana's house to celebrate. Uh, Nana believes she's going to die on her 80th birthday due to a palm reading that she had when she was younger. And her house is by the ocean and it gets completely cut off during high tide. So the family is going there and they're going to be there during high tide and they're not going to be able to leave the island for eight hours. So the family is there, somebody dies, and then somebody else 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 dies. It's a thing that happens. Um, and so the book is like us trying to figure out along with Daisy who's dying, who's doing the killing, and like how everything is happening and why. And we get a lot about like Daisy's backstory, the backstory of her family members. It's very character driven, but it's also like very, like if you like an enclosed space, can't get away kind of thriller murder mystery, then I think this would be a good book for you. If you have read and then there were none, you will probably guess like the plot twist, but you won't guess the other plot twist because there, I don't know anybody that could have guessed that. I don't know a single soul that could have guessed that. I mean, there might be somebody out there but it sure as hell wasn't me because it threw me for a fucking, I was like, I'm sorry, what? I had to like go back and reread again. And I want to reread this whole book again, knowing what I know now to see if I would have been able to figure it out had I been looking for it. Uh, because <laughs> it's just one of those things, you know, how sometimes when you read a mystery and a thing happens and you're like, this changes the entire perspective of this book. And so I need to go back and reread it probably sometime this year. I will reread this because I have so many thoughts. We're gonna do three more that were part of the mid-month wrap-up and then we'll talk about four more books that we haven't talked about yet. These all three are a 4.25 out of 5 stars and they are The Screaming Staircase which is the first book of The Lockwood & Co by Jonathan Stroud, That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming, and Make a Wish by Helena Hunting. This is the third book in the Spark Sisters trilogy and again those three books you can see in my mid-month wrap-up. Also at a 4.25 out of 5 stars is The Carol Haunt by Darcy Coates. If you've been around for a while, you know that I am loving all things Darcy Coates. I think this is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth book from her that I have read. And I don't know how a woman can write so many haunted house stories and then be so different and so fucking creepy. 
Uh, this one, to me, if you've ever seen the uh, Stephen King miniseries Rose Red, I think this is very reminiscent of Rose Red, where our main character, whose name is Remy, she is a tour guide at a haunted house. And there's a rich guy that comes in and says, hey, I want you to be our tour guide because you have so much knowledge of all of the history of this house. And I want to bring in a couple of mediums. And I want to see if I can, you know, like, figure out the ghost thing. She agrees to go with them into the house and to do this, you know, give them the knowledge and the information of things that happened in the past. And of course, because it's a haunted house story, shit starts happening, shit gets real weird. Um, there's a lot of like, of creepy, essentially Darcy Coates writes horror, but it's very like thriller horror, where there's like a mystery that you're trying to figure out. There is like thrilling tales around every corner, but also she will creep you the fuck out. So it's it's very genre bending in that aspect, but I think that's kind of reminiscent of all of the horror that I like. It also has like some mystery thriller elements, so. But I love Darcy, like she is fantastic. Her writing, the way that she puts stories together, just they will blow your fucking mind. I was not expecting the ending of this story. It definitely was different than what I had expected. And I had a really good time reading this. So again, I think if you like horror and you like haunted house stories, at this point, I would say anything that you pick up by Darcy Coates is a win. Um, I've read this one, I've read Gallows Hill, I've read The Haunting of Ashburn House and have loved all of them. I've also read everything published thus far in the Gravekeeper series, which is what we're going to talk about next. The Twisted Dead by Darcy Coates. This I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is the third book in the Gravekeeper series. This series follows our main character whose name is Kira. At the very beginning she is running from someone and she's not really sure why. She knows that her name is Kira for sure but has no idea other than that about who she is and she finds a priest and he hides her from the people who are running after her. Um, he's able to convince them that she you know has ran off in a different direction or whatever and the priest helps her kind of um, make a place for herself in this town that she's into. They discover that she can see and communicate with ghosts and she has the ability to help ghosts pass on um, from their unfinished business and so the priest basically gives her a place to stay in exchange for her helping um, the parishioners that he had who have passed on but are just like chilling in the graveyard help them if she helps them you know move on from this plane and so he gives her a place to stay and she meets a couple of people in town and it's very like found family very very horror-esque um lots and lots of like spooky creepy stuff happening in all three books this one had some very creepy vibes and i'm very excited i thought that this was a trilogy and it is definitely not by the way that this ends um so I'm super stoked because I thought it was just going to be a trilogy uh, and I'm ready to read more from Kira and her friends. Also at a 4.5 out of 5 stars we have Not Your Hexes Exes by April Asher. This is the second book in the Supernatural single series. The series follows three sisters who are part of this family. Their grandmother is the Prima which is basically the leader of the Witch's Coven and these three sisters are triplets and historically the oldest triplet is supposed to be the new Prima but the first book follows our main character who does not have any powers. Uh, she's the oldest sister, therefore she's supposed to be the prima, she doesn't have any powers. So they instead train her middle sister, Rose, to be the prima and the second book follows Rose. Um, basically in this world there are shapeshifters, there are guardian angels, there are demons, there are uh, vampires, there are all kinds of different magical creatures and they all exist within our plane and for me the very interesting thing about this series is that it's not a lot of times when you get books like this it is humans against the others it's humans against the creatures and this series is not like that at all it's very much the creatures against the creatures the creatures against themselves um like just the hierarchy and things like that that are all happening within their own communities is the issue um, they're very much romance novels don't get me wrong they're very steamy they're very romance heavy but there is plot and there is world building and I do appreciate that which is why it's rated so highly. Um, if you like supernatural romance 
highly recommend. And the last book that we're going to talk about, but not a whole lot because I have an entire reading vlog for it on my channel, which I will link down below, is Delicious Monsters by our friend Lizelle Sanberry, who is a fellow author tuber, and I will link down below as well. Uh, I read this as an ARC. I gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This story follows two main characters, Daisy, who is set 10 years in the past, and Brittany, who is set in present day. Daisy has the ability to see ghosts, and her mother and her inherit a haunted house that they kind of move to to um, set up as like a bed and breakfast or an Airbnb. And they weird shit starts happening. So we're getting the perspective of Daisy in the past and kind of like what's happening as things are happening. And then at a smaller point of view, we get Brittany, who's in present day, who is doing a documentary YouTube series on um, haunted houses. She wants to do the documentary on missing black girls, but the company that she works for is like, nobody wants to hear about missing black girls because because people are racist and that's why. And so she instead convinces them that they're going to do it about haunted houses. Um, but the first haunted house is about a missing black girl. So good for you, Brittany. I respect that. And you know, you gotta take the man down sometimes. So we're getting Brittany's point of view of what she's discovering about Daisy and the past and getting, um, and talking to people that we're also seeing Daisy talk to in like moments of her daily life. And we're getting like differing perspectives of what they're talking to about Daisy in present day or in the past and then what they're actually telling Brittany had happened in the past. So it's an interesting dynamic of a multiple dual timeline, dual perspective. I loved this book. It made me cry. I did not expect to read a horror book that is this chunky and also it made me cry but the end did make me cry which is a thing that Lizelle loves to do. Trust me. I told her it made me cry and she laughed at me because she loves to make me cry. Thanks Lizelle. <laughs> I loved this book. I loved everything about it. I had a great time. It was very spooky. It had plot twists, like things that I seen coming but were not exactly what I expected them to be or were so much better than what I could have made up. Like in my brain I'm going like this thing is for sure gonna happen and it did happen but it took it to a whole other level of what I was not expecting. Um, I had a fantastic time reading this book uh, as you can see from my reading vlog uh, of just me like the last when I finished it having an absolute just cry fest panic attack. So yeah that. That's everything. That's all 21 books. We talked about some today. We sent you to a place where you can hear about the other 12. I read a lot of books in February. I want to say I'm hoping I don't read as much in March because I would like to do a few other things besides just read. Um, but I'm okay if I do because honestly this was a very productive month. I read a lot of books that were on my shelf and I'm very excited about that. There are a heap and ton of links for you in the description box down below. Um, good Goodreads reviews, other people, other links, all of that down below. If you made it this far in the video leave me a, an emoji down below make it a dragon. Is there a dragon emoji? If there's not, leave a lizard. It's fine. Leave some kind of reptile emoji down below. <laughs> that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!